What's the word? What's the word? It's your boy Dre Franco. This is one of them. This ain't a debate, but can you relate, man? I'm one half of the relatable podcast. My boy Tank couldn't be here. Shout out my boy Tank. I got my boy Jada Darkskin in the building. Shout out to Jada Darkskin, man, for sliding through here, man. I want to let these people know your, how you got your name. Because if you Jada Darkskin, I'm Dre the Light Skin. That's funny. <laughs> I could be doing that shit, too. Yeah, now I'm Dre the Light Skin. <laughs> but um, it's self-explanatory. You feel me? My name Jay, Dark Skin. But, like, back when I was younger, Dark Skins, we ain't really getting no love for real. You feel me? We was all types of blacks and all types of crazy shit. You feel me? But I just kind of, like, just owned it at one point. You feel me? I had posted a picture like Jay, your favorite dark skin, and then I just kind of that's ran what's with up. It. That's what's up. So, man, where you was born? Where you where you was born and raised? Where Jay the dark skin spent most of his days? Um, so I was born in Long Beach, Long Beach Memorial, and then uh we moved to Carson, and then Compton, and then we moved out here when I was like five. So I was raised out here. That's what's up, man. Did you um grow up with both parents in your household? Nah, just moms. Just mom? Yeah. Um, my dad, like, he was somewhat around, yeah. but it was honestly it wasn't enough for me. You feel me? Cause I'm just in a house with my mom, my granny, and my sister. You feel me? Okay. So, so you was raised around a couple females and all that. But yeah. how did how you think that affects you growing up? Like not having your dad around. Um, you kind of just. Well, first off, you get angry like a motherfucker, you feel me? Mm-hmm. You like, I wish should it be different. Like, should it be different if I had a dad or if he was around, I should say. Because yeah. you don't know how to do, like, certain manly shit mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, for a while, for a while, I was mad at bro. You know what I'm saying? Me and my pops, we ain't really get cool till I was, like, 22. And I'm 24 right now. All right. So. So you got a child. Like, you just had, you got one son? Yeah, my son, Major. Major? All Major right, so two. now that you're not having a father growing up, how is it important to be in his life? Uh, Super, very. Because um, like, I just get to do the shit that I always wanted to do, mm-hmm. you feel me, when I was younger. So I'm trying to implement all that shit now, you feel me, like playing catch, going out, getting food, and all types of shit like that. So That's what's up. I make sure I'm there and I do my part. How old was you when you had your, your first job? Uh, 21, 22. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, man, before we even get super, super deep into this uh podcast, I need everybody to drop eight balls in the comments if you fuck with me, if you fuck with the podcast, if you fuck with all of this. Because, man, like I say, this dude, Jada Young, is a real, real big supporter, man. He be my, supporting heavy. crazy. Oh, my man. <laughs> why did I say Jada Young? Hey, that's why I did. I had that in the thing, though. I said because. Did you get your name from that? Like the nah, Jaden Youngins and the Jaden Dark people, Skin? Like nah. you ever get that? Now, now you know, people <laughs> they was like, bro, you just biting his shit. I'm like, I don't even listen to bro. You yeah. feel me? No disrespect to him. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I man. Didn't even know Long who live Jaden Youngin, man. Yeah, rest in peace, Jaden Youngin. Though. Yeah, but before we get all the way in, my bad, my bad. Like I say, Jay, the Dark Skin. Man, he really be fucking with the podcast though. He support this motherfucker heavy. He always commenting. He liking, sharing, supporting. So. It was only right that he came through and sat down, man. And to all of y'all that's out there, man, I need y'all to do the same, man. If y'all want to pull up and pop y'all shit on this podcast, bro. Hell yeah, come fuck with my nigga Dre and Tank, man. It's that, that motherfucking simple, bro. Like my saying, man, he was hitting me up to be up on here, so I feel like you got a lot to say, man. You got a, you got something for your fans. I don't know, is this your first podcast? No, this is like my second, third. Your second, third? That's what's up. How was your experience on your the first couple ones? <clears throat> well, the first one I had with uh, Cece, she do open book with Cece. I'm not sure if you heard her or not. Mm-hmm. But um, it was cool, but I told her I wanted to come back because, you know, I had brought my homie with me. Okay. I had brought VZ with me. Yeah. And, like, we going to get into that, too. We two, like. Different people. Yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, He the producer, if motherfuckers don't know. Producer and videographer. This little nigga, Fly Guy VZ, is very, very talented. We going to dive into him in a minute, though, but yeah. carry on, though. But I'm, um, like. So it was like you would need a whole separate episode. episode yeah, exactly. Me? Like you know, because we kind of like ad lib for each other and shit mm-hmm. like that. But you know, to get the full 
like insight and shit like that, you're going to need two separate ones for sure. Got you. Got you. But it was man. cool. It was cool. That's what's up. That's what's up, well, man. Shout out you for being on this one, my gang. My gang. But uh, let me see, man. How was your weekend? Let's talk about that, man. How was your weekend passing? How did, uh, did you um prep for that hurricane, Hurricane uh Hillary? You ain't do no prepping. <laughs> no, bro, we was. I was chopping it up with my baby mama. Like, man, this shit bullshit. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, that shit crazy. Motherfuckers act that I prep. Yeah, I fucking. And then like you feel me, it's California too. Yeah. Like, we not really gonna get no super. Crazy, crazy shit, shit for yeah. That's right now. Right now, I just had my weed in a box of pieces. I was straight. That's the most I did to prepare for that shit. But uh, man, let me see. We gonna talk about you growing up and all that, bro. When did the rapping start coming to you? Like, when did you want to be become <coughs> a rapper? Um, real young, probably like ten. Ten for real. Who inspired you growing up? Like, who's some of your first inspirations in the rap game? It be like I don't know. It'd be hard for me to answer that because. Like, I don't know, I had, like, a lot of interest. Like, my first ever CD was, like, a uh, it was a Bow Wow CD. And then I had the <laughs> Soldier Boy CD. <laughs> and then Jim Jones. So, you feel me? It was just all over the place yeah. type shit. So, I can't really pinpoint it. But I was a, a fan of music and rapping at a very young age. How do you describe your music, your genre of music? Where I'm, would you place your music at? I say it is unorthodox. And then... Shit talking, you feel me? I got some real shit too though, but That's it seemed on. like the shit talking go up more. So yeah, yeah, niggas don't like that that conscious music, the shit they gotta sit and think about. I could about. do that too. I could do that as well, but you know, it's just like the shit that you really put your all into. It just it's like stagnant for real. I feel it. I feel it. So what's your studio process like, man? In the booth, me personally, I like to have uh, solo sessions for real, like. Just, I have my shit prepped at home. I find the beat, whether it's on YouTube or the homie send me one. I write to that motherfucker, go to the studio, and then I just, you know, knock out as much as I can. That's what's up. Do you um go bar for bar, like punch in, or do you sometimes, like to write all your shit? Usually I write, but uh, I, I punch in sometimes for sure, like when I'm just freestyling and shit. That's what's up. That's, That's what's mostly up. on like them Detroit beats, though. Like, yeah. They talking shit too, yeah. Uh-huh. They talking shit. All right, man. I seen you post it. Well, you posted a couple times, but I don't know if you really want to speak about it. Your illness that you have that you've been dealing with. I don't know if it was some birth or did you oh, yeah. grow up on uh, time. So I uh I was born with sickle cell. Got you. Um, enlarged heart, heart murmur, asthma, and shit like that. But um, and you know they got cures and shit for it now, but it's like. It's only beneficial to you for real if like you real young type mm-hmm. shit. But they said like the cure is like hella painful. You gotta go to like Chicago and shit like mm-hmm. that. So I kinda just you know, I just kinda thug through it type shit. Like I just always live with it twenty four eight. How like, how did that affect you growing up? Like like in playing sports or hanging out with friends or what the doctors they for sure was like, Yeah, he can't play contact sports. Mm-hmm. Um they told niggas like, Yeah, he like play golf or something and I'm like Golf, nigga, like that's crazy. Like, so you really just gotta be cautious. Like, uh, I had a porta calf, mm-hmm. and it's like to help them uh draw blood and shit like that. But mm-hmm. once I got that removed, I was like twelve, and then um, <clears throat> I started playing like flag football. Mm-hmm. So you feel me? I always tried to just like push, like I always try to push myself regardless. Try to keep up with the other kids and shit like that. But um, you really do gotta pace yourself. And just whatever you do, um, or else you, because if you overexert yourself, it's gonna be bad for sure. Do you, you have a crisis and you are gonna be in the hospital for, you know, umpteenth amount of time? Like, yeah, we are gonna talk about the in and out the hospital. But do you feel like your sickle cell ever stopped you from doing anything, accomplishing anything? Mm, I used to feel like that, but uh, well, yeah, I say yeah. Is there any examples you can give? Just like, I don't know, I feel like I could have been pretty cool with hooping and shit like that, honestly, yeah. but, like, it was just, it was it was too much on my body. Like, mm-hmm. you feel me? I love playing basketball, but, you know, like I said, if you overexert yourself, nigga, it's, it's bad. What was probably one of your worst experiences dealing with it, like, hospitalized, like, that you had to deal with? Um, well, shit, last year, bro, I was in a coma. 
Yeah, I remember. Yeah, speak on that. I was in a coma. Um, I remember one day I was just chilling in my room, and like out of nowhere, I had like a bad crisis, bro. Like it was like a ten, and I was just screaming and shit. And then like my mom came in and she called the ambulance, and then I had went to uh. De- or not Desert Valley, Victor Valley. Mm-hmm. But you feel me, you know. They ain't got no trauma, so they sent you what, Loma Linda? Nah, hell no, nah, nigga. Loma Linda, they almost killed me when I was younger. God damn. Well, well, man, talk about, go back. I only rewind. So, <laughs> the Loma Linda situation, uh, they had gave me some medicine, and it's but it's in their documents, you feel me? That like, you're allergic to? Yeah, you yeah. feel me? So, you know, I guess they had gave me that, and, you know, shit was crazy or whatever to where I couldn't breathe type shit. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so we don't fuck with Loma Linda. I've been going to, uh, well, I was going to Long Beach until I turned 21. Mm-hmm. It was a children's hospital. Mm-hmm. So they had to let me go once I turned 21. Mm-hmm. So I've been at Arrowhead and Colton right now. So talk about the um, <coughs> your coma. Yeah, so I just. How uh, long was you in there? Like seven, eight days, like a week. And mm-hmm. uh, when I woke up, it was just, well, first off, I remember like. Yeah, what do you remember before getting. Entered into the hospital that night. It was just like floating in and out of consciousness type shit. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, I'm not even trying to put extras on it or nothing. It was like floating in and out of consciousness. I was laying down and I see like doctors mm-hmm. here and like the room was low ball. From what I remember, it was like red. You mm-hmm. feel me? And I just woke up and I had like a tube a down my fucking throat. Yeah. One like in the side of my neck. Fucking tubes up my nose and shit. Uh, I had one in my Johnson, bro. That shit was bad. I ain't gonna lie to you. It was everywhere, bro. I had to you pee asked, so I said, yeah, you had a gang of tubes. Out of you, bro. To, and you lost a lot of weight. Like, bro, I was... uh, Talk about that. I was 170 and then uh, I was like 142. And then I dropped down even more to 139. Mm. So I've been seeing you coming back in, in the gym and you've been trying to get your health back right. Is there anything you're doing differently that can prevent that from happening again or is just that shit can happen at any time? What, as far as, like, the coma or yeah. as far as... Um, I honestly don't know what the fuck caused that. That shit... I don't know. They said a lot of shit was failing, like, my kidneys, my lungs. They told my mom and everybody, like, y'all might want to come up here like it's bad. Mm-hmm. So you feel me? After almost checking out, it was just like, uh, it was how like long, a wake up call. How long did it take you to get back on your feet? Um, like three and a half months. Three and a half months, I started driving again. Um, I started walking a little bit, shit like that. You tried to go to like physical therapy and stuff. They sent somebody to my house, but they only came like one time. And you feel me? I had did like some bicycle kicks and shit like that, but. Um, I don't know. They just stopped coming. But me personally, I just tried to see where my strength was at type mm-hmm. shit. So I'm like doing push ups and, mm-hmm. you know, whatever I can do. But I was super fatigued for sure. And uh, yeah, it was. It so was how your health right now, man? It's, it, it's way better. Way so better. like I still got, like I can't feel certain parts of my feet. Mm-hmm. Or like if I do it, like. I still got foot pain and shit like that. I can't feel this finger. Um, my lips was numb too. Like my bottom lips, they was numb for like yeah. four, five months type shit. So, how do you deal with this? How do you, what do you do to cope with this? Do you take any medication? Yeah, I, um, I be uh taking my Norco's and shit like that. Norco. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been addicted to any type of substance? Yeah, for sure. Is there anything uh, you want to talk about? Um. Before, I was telling the homies, like, being in pain a lot can make you an accidental addict. Mm-hmm. So, you feel me? Like, I'm taking this shit for pain, whether it's a Norco or a Percocet or whatever the fuck. Once you take, once you keep taking it on a constant basis, it's like, your body start craving it for real. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. At one point, I was uh addicted to Norcos and shit like that. Cause, well, obviously the pain, mm-hmm. but then, like, the feeling, too. What did you do to pretty much knock that, not that addiction? Uh, honestly, I still struggle with it today, but mm-hmm. that's real big for you to admit to that and to speak on that for real, for real. I just think about like, 
like a bigger picture, bro. Like mm-hmm. I got a son now. So you got something so, to live for. You feel me? So now it's like I can't be selfish. Mm-hmm. Cause I know how I felt when I was younger. My dad wasn't all the way around. Mm-hmm. So if I was just gone, it's like you feel me. I felt myself and him. So it's like I gotta really be disciplined. Like I said, I still struggle with it, but I got my like I have my times where I have my strength. You feel me? You ever um smoked weed? Yeah, but we not really for me. Like, um. I just, I don't know. Sometimes a nigga still be paranoid sometimes, honestly. Mm-hmm. So, but nah. What I about just, the lean? You ever tapped into that? Nah, I never. I had sipped one time before. It was like a little line, but nah. Crazy. Hell no. Nah, I, don't, I don't fuck with that for real. That's what's up, at all, I should say. I would want to talk about how you met my boy Fly Guy VZ, man. <coughs> how did I meet, bro? Uh, uh, oh, we had met. Through this uh, <laughs> girl, <laughs> uh, we had met through this girl or whatever. Uh, yeah, I guess we was both talking to her at the same time, and uh, she had told me to come over, and she was at his house. So you feel me? I had came over, and we was all just chopping it up or whatever. Um, and you know, we just started talking about music, and he showed me his stuff. I was like, "Damn, this nigga dope as fuck!" Like, mm-hmm. for real. So I, ever since then, we just been locked in. We didn't. Fought niggas together. We didn't. We didn't did a lot, bro. So he kind of responsible for some of uh, your visuals and your um your producing. For sure, for sure. Uh, he do make a lot of my beats. Mm-hmm. Um, he do shoot a lot of my videos. Him and Ty, rest in peace, my boy. Rest in peace, Ty. Ty the great. But yeah, he do pretty much all my videos. That's what's up. For we got to sure. get that nigga on here, too, man. We got to yeah, get Fly Guy sure. Visa. Like you said, man, y'all can't come together. That's a whole separate entity. Yeah, you here, feel man. me? It'll be, I should have be five hours, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that little nigga's a fool, bro. He's a fucking character. So talk about um marketing your music. Like, how, how what are you doing to market your music? Um, Right now, I'm, honestly, I am doing a poor job. But um, I just been Instagram. That's all I've been doing right now. But I do want to get back on, like, TikTok and mm-hmm. Twitter. It's hard as fuck to go viral mm-hmm. on Twitter. But I want to do all that, like, Instagram, Twitter. How your Spotify looking? Uh, my Spotify pretty cool. Last time I checked it, it was, like, almost 200 monthly listeners. That's good. That's good. You know. And I know that's not a plethora, but that's way more than it was. You ain't dealing with, like, no too. type of distributions or anything like that? A distro kid. You fuck with distro kid? Mm-hmm. That's sure. I've been on distro kid for, like, three, four years now. What about with um with Instagram like the say cheese or anything like for having them repost or post your shit? Instagram say cheese. Yeah, like oh, uh, like uh, the repost, like the marketing for that. You ever? I had ever, reached out to who did I reach out to? Was it no jumper? Mm-hmm. No, I ain't gonna lie. I got scammed like two years ago, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right before my son was born, uh, it was a lady acting like she was working for uh, say cheese, mm-hmm. and she was like, "Oh yeah, if you uh." It was like three hundred or five hundred dollars. She was like, "Oh yeah, if you want to be on, if you want to get a post on here, mm-hmm. a permanent post is three hundred. So I sent it to her, and she was like, "Okay, what do you want me to say?" And I'm like, at first I was like, "What you mean? What you like? You feel Yo, me?" Yo, caption. She wanted to know your caption. You hit me up with this shit, so I'm thinking <laughs> you already tapped in. Yeah. So I told her like, put this, and then I sent her the bread, and then she just got on. She blocked me. <laughs> I was like, that's crazy. I found that bitch on Twitter, man. <laughs> I was like, bitch, you going to scam me? She was like, what are you talking about? Like, all right. <laughs> That's some fucked up shit, bro. That's some but fucked nah, up shit. But nah, as far as, like, really getting on there for real, for real, uh, I haven't, not yet. Uh-uh. Grindface just followed me today, though. Hey, shout out to Grindface, man. They just been yeah, reposting our shit, too, bro. Shout out to Grindface, man. But uh, I was about to ask you, on the music, who you think... Like I want to say in the hot desert, who you fucking with in the hot desert when it comes to the music? Is there oh. anybody out there that stand out to you? Um, I don't want to sound biased, <laughs> <laughs> but um, cause and you know I just genuinely like a lot of people's shit. All right, and you know I be trying to tap in with the whoever, but um, I fuck with Terry Green, Veezy of course. Mm-hmm. Spokes, you got to get her on here. Oh yeah, T Spokes. Shout Spokes out to T Spokes. I'm gonna definitely get on. Thanks. Her. For sure. uh, let me see who else. Uh, I fuck with Cage. Shout out Cage. Uh, BJ. 
And it, it, it's a couple more, but y'all be fucking with them. Is it anybody you would like to work with? Uh, like in the industry, Shit, everybody. Oh, industry. in the industry, yeah, um, industry wide. Shit, well, you know, people be getting on me because my fa- one of my favorite artists is uh, G Herbo. Okay. And you feel me? Niggas hate Herbo. Like, <laughs> they hate that nigga. But um, y'all fuck with, uh, I want to make music with her, Meek. Mm-hmm. Shit, I'll do a track with Blueface. That's what's up. Um, Janae Aiko. Um, and then, you know, niggas be getting on me about this, too. I'll make a song with Sexy Red, bro. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Ski, yeah. Hey, no, nah, man. Shout out St. Louis in the building, man. Shout out to Sexy Red. Man. Though. Hey, she no, she's really shit. just doing she her really shit. Popular, like, she's just real, yeah. just raw and authentic. Yeah, like, you yeah. feel me? That's what the, I fuck with. The industry with need that. The industry That's what I'm saying. definitely need that shit, man. So, what was some, um, I want to say, some TV shows you was watching growing up? Or even some TV shows you watch now? I don't really watch TV now, but back then, uh, I say Dragon Ball Z as far as anime. Mm-hmm. Um... Regular show, you, you ever watch that? No. Nah, you gotta put me on. I was that. Sh- it was. It's basically like one big ass acid trip, bro. Like, <laughs> it's always some crazy shit happening every episode. Yeah, you gotta put me on that but shit. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z regular show, Majin Partners of Monkey. Basically everything on Cartoon Network back then, bro. Gotcha. I'm gonna keep switching it up. But what's some of the uh the goals you want to get up out this rap game, man? Um, on my masters for sure. Mm-hmm. Um. I want to get a deal, but I want to get a like a real decent deal to where it's not like I'm slaving and it's no mm-hmm. bullshit, like no 360 deal or whatever. But even if it's just a distribution deal, like you feel me, I'll do that too. But um, yeah, for sure, I want to own my masters, get some type of deal to where you're not getting fucked over. And uh, should I want to tour too? Like I want to go past LA and mm-hmm. the Bay and shit like that because as far as West Coast artists. Nobody fuck with us but us. Mm-hmm. Like, them niggas in Atlanta and Chicago, they not really slapping our shit like how mm-hmm. we slapping theirs. Exactly. You feel me? I just feel like Cali music don't go past, I want to say, Arizona. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, you feel me? You got to be like Roddy Rich or something. You yeah. got to. You can't sound like you from here. Yeah. And I mean, your sound is kind of crazy. I want to say, you remind me of Kaylin Pharrell a little bit. I don't know if you heard that. You ever get that a lot? No, I never got that, but I, I see how you got that, yeah. though. It's Especially like the rapping the, uh, with the melody and, like, you yeah, know, the, uh, the melodic form type shit. Like the R and bass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, so let's talk about that J-Songs, man. You released a project called J-Songs. I want to say one know, of my favorite shits on there was that Everything Did With You and Fly Got Veezy, but what what is one of your favorite songs on there? Um, Love Your Bop with Donnie Lope. Everything did like you mentioned, and then that one with Terry Green. Or, matter of fact, I got two on there, but uh, what was it? Oh, it's tripping. That's the uh, it was a uh, Keith Sweat sample. Okay, you remember that twisted? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you feel me? So we flipped that or whatever, and uh, I just named it tripping. And then I like wrote the hook for Terry, and he just brought it to life for real. And okay. then at home, that's my favorite one. Are uh, you were speaking so, on so. writing for him? Would you ever let somebody write for you, like be a ghostwriter? Oh. Um, how would you hire your ghostwriter? If it benefited me, like, like you feel me? We both really, really making a bag for real. But if you know, we just on some snack, stagnant regular shit. Probably not. I feel it. I we'll feel have it. To really benefit both of us. But I would ghostwrite myself though, like for others. That's what's up. I have, I, matter of fact, rappers out here. <laughs> you you couldn't say a name. <laughs> I ain't gonna put them out there like that, but. <laughs> Hey, have you ever met somebody famous? Um, celebrity. Oh, I met Kobe before when I was like. How was that experience? Was it uh, everything you thought it was, or he was like? I didn't really get to chop it up with him for real, like how I wanted to. But I got to shake his hand and shit, and then we got to like watch them shoot around. But that was cool. That was a cool moment. You know what I'm saying like I'm like right here, and bro was like right there, and he was just shooting around. But I tried to say something to him, but. Obviously, the crowd going crazy and shit like that. Um, Who was somebody you would like to meet? Um, like, as far as anybody or just rap? Anybody. Um, anybody. Shit. Will Smith. Will Smith. Will Smith. That nigga, Will like, Smith. he just got, like, an ample amount of success on every level. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Her, too. Um, but yeah, Will Smith, just chop it up with him. Jay Z, 
Yeah. Is there anything you would like your listeners to know about you that probably people don't know about you? Mm. I'm a cool nigga, bro. <laughs> uh, like, for real, like, a lot of niggas, they be, they be seeing me or whatever, uh, and I guess I don't be looking too friendly or whatever, but if a, if a nigga just come up to me, I'm cool. So, so. I got rest in nigga face. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga is dumb as fuck, boy. <laughs> you hella stupid, bro. All right, man. I'm going to probably start ripping it up, man. Let let these people know where to find you, man. Or you got any quotes you live by? Uh, Yeah. Matter of fact, the homie Kariga, uh, shit, you got to get him on here, too. Shot him but on. bro said, be real, not perfect. Mm-hmm. I felt the fuck out of that. You live by that. That's what's up, man. That's definitely what's up, man. But um, shit, if you want to find me, you can find me everywhere at Jada Dark Skin, J A Y D A Dark Skin, Instagram, Spotify, Title, TikTok, Apple Music, Facebook, all that shit, man. Now, is it something that I didn't ask you? You probably wanted to be asked. Um, I think we tackled every topic truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up, man. We're gonna have to bring you back up on this motherfucker, man. You ain't got nothing coming up in the future, man. Any projects? Um need to right. be looking out for any visuals. I mean, I got songs, but as far as projects, nah, not nothing coming soon. Or you know what? I'm not gonna say coming soon, but I'm aiming for I'm aiming for uh Valentine's Day again. I'm gonna do uh J Songs Deluxe. That's what's up. That's what's you feel up. Me? The songs that didn't make the original tape and then obviously the new ones with that. But yeah, that's what's up. But as far as everything else, I just got singles and shit. Nothing too crazy. Keep them off, keep them coming, bro. Keep them motherfuckers coming, man. We gonna get up out of here, man. Shout out my boy Jay the Dark Skin for sliding through. I'm your boy Dre the Light Skin. Y'all know what the <laughs> fuck going on. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. We up out of here, man. This ain't a debate. But can you relate? You hear me? Yeah. Gang in them motherfucker. <laughs>